Hey everyone, I hope you're all having a great day. My name is Teacher Luke and welcome to this live English lesson. Today we're going to talk about common mispronounced words in English. I'll give you some examples of the most commonly, mis commonly mispronounced words and then show you why they are commonly mispronounced so you don't have to make the same mistakes. I hope this will be a fun lesson for you guys. I hope my internet connection is okay. It looked a little bit uh, slow earlier, but I, I hope we're doing okay. Um, if the connection is very poor, guys, please let me know in the chat box. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. We have some people here already, so hi guys, I hope you're doing well. We have Lullaby Memo, Rokio, and uh, I can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry, but it's... Uh, Parakia? Parakia? I hope that's correct. Okay, so today, like I mentioned, we're going to talk about common mispronounced words. Hi, Zhonghua. Hi, Christine. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're having a good day and staying safe wherever you are. Hardeep, how are you? Okay, guys, so let's quickly go through my lesson and at the end like we can have a, a Q&A session that'll be always very fun okay hello Gok Dezin hope you're doing well how are you hi Anjay from Germany do you know what Anjay I studied in Germany when I was younger just just for one semester but it was a it was a great experience Okay, guys, so today we're going to talk about common mispronounced words. I'll give you lots of practice, and at the end, we'll do an English Q&A. I hope my, uh, reset, my signal and my internet connection is better. It was very slow earlier. But anyway, so let's jump into it. So I did a lesson similar to this on YouTube. You can find it. It's called Words You're Saying Wrong. This lesson focused just on silent syllables, but you can find the link in the description below later, and then you can watch this video. Um... So commonly mispronounced words in English. English spelling doesn't always match its pronunciation. I'm sure as a language learner, you are aware of this. English spelling and English pronunciation are quite different in a lot of cases. This is because of many reasons. One, English is a pretty old language in terms of English writing. So the writing doesn't change, but the pronunciation does change. So that means there's a gap between pronunciation and writing. Also, English has a lot of borrowed words, especially from French. So we have a lot of French influence in our spelling, but not in our pronunciation. Lots of reasons why, but English spelling doesn't match the pronunciation. I'm studying Korean at the moment, and I'm very lucky because Korean writing Korean spelling and Korean pronunciation match almost exactly. It's really good for learners. That's because the Korean writing, Korean writing system, Hangul it's called, is only about 500 years old. So the language hasn't adapted that much. Whereas English writing is very old and the pronunciation has moved away a lot since then. So there is a big gap between the spelling and the pronunciation. So we'll look at some commonly mispronounced words today. Okay, so some examples for you. We have bomb, ghost, and half. Number two, we have chocolate, temperature. And number three, skirt, work, and curse. So I have a quick test for you. Guys, in the chat, write down why... What is, what's wrong with these words? Why do these words have... Uh, why are these words often mispronounced? Right, write it in the chat box below. Why, why do you think these words are often mispronounced in English? There's a reason for each set. So, for example, number one has a reason, number two has a reason, and number three has a reason. So go ahead, write in the chat. Why do you think these words are commonly mispronounced? Okay, I, th I have a feeling my connection's very slow. 
Okay, uh, anyway, so let, let's run through together. So the first one, these words are commonly mispronounced because there's a silent letter. The B in bomb is silent. The H in ghost is silent. And the L in F is silent. So listen closely. Bomb, ghost, half. Not bomb, ghost, half. These, that's wrongly, that's wrong pronunciation. So there's a silent letter in set one. Set two, listen closely, chocolate, temperature. So actually in set two, there is a silent syllable. Not choc or temp It is chocolate and temperature. So there's a silent syllable. And number three, these words are commonly mispronounced because the vowel sound in all of these words is exactly the same. But of course, the vowel letter is very different. So look close, listen closely. Skirt, work, curse. The vowel sound in these words is exactly the same. Not skirt or work or curse. The vowel sound is all e. Uh. Skirt, work, curse. So these, this number three causes a lot of problems for pronunciation issues. So we're going to go through each one individually and give you lots of examples and lots of practice. Okay, so let's start with silent letters. Hello, Hardeep from India. Hello, hello, uh, Gokdenzin from Turkey. Good to see you guys. Thanks for joining my lesson. So silent letters. Words with a silent B. So the B is often silent in lots of words. So what's the rule? Well, the rule is that B is not pronounced after an M at the end of a word. So if the word ends in a B, in a B, but the previous letter is M, then B is not pronounced. For example, dumb, comb, bomb, thumb, and climb. There is no B sound in any of these words. So be careful with these ones. Remember, if the B is at the end and the previous letter is an M, then we don't pronounce the B sound. L yes, lullaby, limb is another great example, yes. Rule number two, B is usually not pronounced before T at the end of a root word. For example, debt, doubt, subtle. Subtle doesn't exist. Yeah. So in this case, T is after B in debt, after B in doubt, and after B in subtle. But the B sound is not pronounced in any of these words. Listen again. Debt, doubt, subtle. Debt, doubt, subtle. No B sound whatsoever. A lot of my students say debt. Doubt, subtle. <laughs> I understand why, because it's in the writing, but the spelling, the pronunciation is just without the B sound. Hi, Hardeep. Hope you're doing well. So, guys, do you have any more examples of silent words with a silent letter B? There are lots. Uh, Lullaby Memo wrote limb, L I M B. It's a great example, but of course, it's just pronounced limb, not limb. So what other examples do you know? Write it in the chat box. And while you are, I'm waiting for you, I'm going to say hi to everyone. So we have 18 students. This is amazing. Thanks, guys. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we have Hardeep, two Hardeeps. <laughs> I hope you guys has a popular name. Ange from Germany. Uh, Mauricio, hi, guys. How are you doing? Gok Dendiz from Turkey. Hi, guys. Okay, guys, so do you have any examples? Meg Hanna, hope you're doing well. Hi. Okay, guys, so while you're writing in the box, we'll go to the next one. Next one is a silent G. Silent G. So, listen again, this is the rule. 
G is not pronounced when it comes before an N. For example, champagne. I know that's a French word, but still, champagne. Foreign. Sign. Foreign again, my bad. And design. These are all examples when G is not pronounced. Okay, we have some more, we have some more examples in the chat from Silent Bees. Anjay says lamb. Yeah, that's a great example. Thank you, Anjay. Lamb. Lamb, there is no b sound in lamb. Okay, this is silent. So this is for G. Remember, G is not pronounced when it comes before an N. Champagne, foreign, sign, design. But there are some exceptions because English has many, many exceptions. So listen to these ones. Magnet, cognitive, signature. In these examples, the G sound is pronounced. So it's not pronounced in champagne, foreign, sign, design, but it is pronounced in magnet, cognitive, and signature. So English spelling and English pronunciation don't match. There are some rules we can follow, but mostly the rules are, there are exceptions to those rules, I mean. So we have to be careful with that. Okay, next one. Yes, Zhonghua, we don't, we don't pronounce the red letters, right? Next one, we have silent K. That's also a very common silent letter. So K is pr not pronounced when it comes before an N at the beginning of a word. Examples. Knife, knee, no, knock, knowledge. There is no K sound in these words. And this is very common, so if you have if you know of any more examples, please let us know in the chat box. Uh, okay, some questions. So Lullaby says, not pronounce if it is in the last part of the word. Yes, right. Right. That is for another one. Uh, Meg Hanna says night. Yes, night K N I G H T, like the old warriors with the swords. Those are not, that's not pronounced with a K, right. Okay, so these are silent letters. These often cause pronunciation problems for many learners and they end up pronouncing these words wrong. So be careful with that. Okay, next one is words with a silent L sound. For example, for the rule, the rule is that L is n not pronounced after the vowels A, O and U. A, O, and U. There is no L sound after these vowels. Examples. Calm. Half. Talk. Walk. Would. Should. Could. Calf. And salmon. Salmon. Listen again. I will say them through and I want you to please repeat them after me. Calm. Half, talk, walk, would, should, could, calf, salmon. So these are examples when the L is not pronounced. But remember, the rule is not pronounced after the vowels A, O, or U. So calm, the vowel is A. Half, A. Would, uh, the vowel is uh, uh, but the last letter is u. So when the vowel a over u comes first and the next letter is an l, usually the l is not pronounced. But of course there are some exceptions because English is a confusing language. So these are some exceptions. Halo is one example. If you played the video game, Halo, L is pronounced. Bulk, bulk, like to buy a lot of food at one time. We can say, I'm buying a bulk of food. Sulk, which is to be sad. Sulk, L is pronounced. Hold, sold, fold. The L in these is pronounced. So you have to be careful because there is a rule. The rule is that L is not pronounced after the vowels A, O, and U. However, 
there are many, many examples in English where it is pronounced. English is a pretty messy language, I think we can say that. Um, someone, a student asked just now, where is your tongue when you pronounce a silent L? Uh, well, it's totally silent. So your tongue is just where the vowel sound is. So you don't use, you don't use um, your tongue. So whatever the vowel sound comes before, that's where your tongue should be. Calm. The tongue is just on R. Calm. Okay, guys. So for these ones, do you have any other examples of words with silent L? So Lullaby Memo wrote cold. So in cold, the L is pronounced. So that would be an exception. Rokio wrote folk. Yes, folk. F-O-L-K. It's not folk. It's folk music. Like folk. For example, folk music. Do you have any other examples? No problem. You said thank you. That's fine. I can't read your name. I think you might be Japanese, but I can't, I can't read Japanese, so. Okay, right, you can write it in the chat. Now let's look. <laughs> Jonghua wrote, fak, falk, fak, fak. <laughs> Jonghua, I'm not sure what that word means, actually. I think maybe F-O-L-K, which is folk. Yes, uh, talk, right, that's a great example, talk. Talk has no L sound, not talk, it's talk. Same for chalk, when you write on a board, blackboard, with chalk. There are lots and lots of examples. Okay, so we've done number one, silent letters. Now let's look at number two, another common reason why students can mispronounce words. And this is because of silent syllables. So firstly, a syllable is one unit of a word. Words are made up of syllables. So a word like dog, only has one syllable. A word like movie, movie, has two syllables. A word like building, building, has two syllables. Lot You can count the syllables in words. So words are made up of different syllables. The rule for a syllable is that one syllable has one vowel sound. It's a bit, there are many except many different complicated rules, but that's the main rule. One syllable, it consists of one vowel sound. English, however, sometimes has silent syllables, especially in longer words. So some words in English pronunciation can lose a syllable when they are said quickly. So listen to this word. I'm going to say this word twice, and it has two pronunciations. We can say specialist, specialist, specialist or we can say specialist very quickly specialist specialist one more time number one specialist specialist number two specialist specialist so sometimes the shua sound the shua is this sound by here and in this word and it's pronounced like uh uh this is sometimes optional in longer words so you can say, you can change specialist to two syllables specialist specialist the word can have two syllables or three syllables so when can a silent syllable occur so silent syllables are common in three words that have three or more syllables where there is a weak sound followed by one of these sounds l R or N. Both pronunciations, including the shua, the a uh sound, or without it as a silent syllable, are correct. However, when you're speaking quickly, it's better to drop it, better to use a silent syllable. So here are some really common examples that students sometimes confuse. So number one, listen to how I say these words with with the shua with the shua sound. So it have extra syllable. We can say chocolate, temperature, temperature, bakery, bakery, family, family, average, average, 
restaurant, restaurant, especially, especially. So these are the words spoken in their full form. But when we're speaking very quickly, we often remove this sound here. So this syllable becomes silent. That's why we call it a silent syllable. So now I'll say these words much quicker and I want you to listen and then also repeat after me without this extra sound here, without the shua sound. Okay, ready? Chocolate, chocolate, two syllables, chocolate. Next one, temperature, 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 three syllables, temperature. Bakery, 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 two syllables, bakery. Number four, family, family, two syllables, family. Number five, average, 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 two syllables. Number six, restaurant, restaurant. Restaurant, two syllables. And number seven, number seven, especially, especially, especially. So guys, so remember that this silent syllable always takes the shua, and sometimes it can be pronounced if you're speaking slower, but oftentimes when you're speaking quickly, you'll hear this without the shua sound, so it becomes a silent syllable. Okay, there are many examples of these. Do you know any more? You can write them in the chat and we can all teach each other. And I'm going to go through some of your questions. So, uh, Lullaby Memo said, is cold an exception? Uh, yes, that would be. Cold, the L is not silent in cold. Uh, Rokia says, folk. Yep, yeah, folk is definitely. And... Uh, Jongwa says, talk. Talk is also a silent L. Uh, Avrik says, thank you. Can you make a video about resume? Uh, do you mean how to write a resume or the pronunciation of resume? Uh, let me know, Avrik. And, oh, English Arts Academy of Karis. <laughs> yeah, she says, restaurant is a hard word to say sometimes. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah. And that's because many students try to read it slowly, restaurant. But the pronunciation is different than the spelling. So, of course, when we speak it quickly, we just use restaurant, two syllables. Secretary, yes, secretary, secretary. Yes, not secretary, but secretary. That's, yes, uh, Rokio, right. You're totally right. Okay, lots and lots of examples. If you have any examples, you can write them in the chat or in the comments below. But let's move on. So this is the last area we're going to focus on of words which have difficult pronunciations. Again, because of their lack of consistency between English spelling and English pronunciation. So, uh, number three. Okay, it's a bit, bit, bit complicated. but So, combinations of vowels. When the word has... E, I, U, or O, but R is in the middle of the word, we actually all pronounce these words in exactly the same way. So let's look at some examples. I have 11 examples for you. So we have girl, turn, term, turn, burn, shirt, skirt, bird, early, thirsty, dirty, and work. Now what's interesting here is that in the spelling, these all have different vowels. We have the I, E, U, U, I, 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 A, I, I, and O. These have different vowel sounds, but when we're speaking, they all take exactly the same vowel sound. So, girl and term have the same vowel, even though the spelling is different. Same for number two and number three. Term and turn, exactly the same vowel sound. So this makes it quite tricky sometimes many, especially beginner students, they pronounce the letter the way it probably should be pronounced, but actually the vowel sound in the pronunciation is different. It takes the uh sound. 
So there are many examples of these guys. So do you have any idea, any more? You can write them in the comments below. Anjay wrote turtle. Yeah, that's a great example, right? In the word turtle, what follows? It is the R. So remember, I, I should make it clearer. Remember, in these words here, like in girl, it always, the vowel is always followed by the R. So I R E R U R, uh, I R, where else? A R and O R. They're always, these vowels are followed by, by the R sound. So it takes the U uh vowel sound. And of course, this is in British English. In American English, they actually pronounce the R sound a bit more strongly. In the British English, we don't pronounce the R sound. Okay, let's some more examples. Turtle, curly, curl, sure, sure, yeah, sure, care. Yeah, these are all good examples, right? Okay, cool. All right, guys, so here's just three quick reasons why sometimes English pronunciation doesn't match the spelling. Therefore, it is uh, difficult for students to actually pronounce these words correctly. You can go back and review, and if you have any other questions, you can leave them in the comment section, and I'll check them for you later. Hello, Mardine from Kurdistan. I hope you're doing well. All right, so we can for the next 20 minutes, guys, we're going to have a Q&A session. So if you have any English questions, it can be related to English language, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, or it could be... Uh, to do with language learning in general. Okay, so let's go through a quick Q&A. All right, so Lullaby says, does the word often have a pronunciation with a T sound or without a T sound? Now, often is an interesting one. I pronounce it with a T sound. I say often, often. But my friends say often, often. Basically, both pronunciations are fine. It depends usually on where you come from. Yeah, it, it depends where you come from usually. So you can say often or often. Both are fine. Same for either. The word either. You can say either or either. Either, either. Both are correct. All right, so where are we? Any questions, guys? Okay, so uh, Uziel says, what is meant by E-E-M and where is it used? Is that like M, like um? I'm not sure what you mean, Uziel, exactly, but probably you mean like um. It's more like a thinking sound, like M, M, I'm thinking. I think. I'm not sure exactly what you mean, but that's what I think. And uh, Arvig says, assignment. Is that the pronunciation? Is assignment. The, in this one, the G, letter G is silent. So it becomes assignment. Assignment. Anjay says he has to mow the lawn. <laughs> Enjoy the sun, Anjay. I'll see you later. Bye. Uh, Zhonghua says, what's the difference between a rat and a mouse? Uh, rats are bigger <laughs> and scarier. Mice are kind of cute, smaller things. Uh, I don't really know the difference, but I know rats are much, much bigger. Uh, but I don't, I don't know exactly what the difference is. Usually, if you see on the street, like going through the trash or the garbage, you can say that's a rat. And mice are much, much smaller. And sometimes people keep mice as pets. I don't think people keep pe rats as pets. Uh, Chishnith K says, hi, hello, good to meet you. And Lullaby says, uh, she read that if we want to learn English, we shouldn't study grammar too much. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, grammar is very important, but the problem is that sometimes students spend too much time studying grammar and not enough time actually practicing using the language. So it's really important to not just study, but practice using the language as well. I would say 50% study, 50% actually using it. So 
in one week, if you have five hours to study English, make sure two and a half is studying grammar and vocabulary, and then two and a half is using English as much as possible. Uh, you can write your own diary. You can chat on live lessons to teachers like me. You can write on social media or talk to your friends, but you have to practice using it. No problem, Zhonghua. Uh, Meghana says, what's the difference between affect and effect? Well, the pronunciation is almost the same. When we're speaking, it almost, for both, both words, it is pronounced as affect, affect. Uh, the difference is affect with an A is a verb and with an E is a noun. That's the main difference. So if you can change, so for example, like I can say, uh, the weather is affecting my mood. I feel grumpy because it's raining. It's affecting my mood. Then it would be a verb with an A. It's kind of, it's changing my mood. Whereas effect is more uh, as a noun, so it's usually followed by the or a or, 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 or the or un. So you can say the effects of global warming are blah, blah, blah. Or an if an effect of studying online is blah, blah, blah. Is that, does that help you, Meghana? But the pronunciations, pronunciation is exactly the same. Do you have any more questions, guys? Uh, yes, uh, 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 yeah. Gr great, good, good uh, definition, yeah. Ab Abith says effect means the result of something, yeah. Right, so the noun, the result of the noun. The result of something as in the noun. Lullaby says, practicing English live with, with me and my friend, Teacher Jack, is very helpful. Yeah, that's great. Meghana, no problem. Uh, Just Keith says, I'm really happy to hear that. And I do like your teaching because it helped me, especially the Friends movie clips. Yeah, great. Thank you. I will definitely make more English videos on YouTube with friends or other TV. Uh, the problem is it, it takes me a long time to make those lessons because... The editing and filming takes many hours, and I'm really busy at the moment with my t my job. So I'm just doing live lessons now and short lessons because it takes less time. But in the summer, when I have a vacation, I will definitely make many friends videos. Uh, how to speak subject, verb, object. Is it correct? Yeah. Yeah, you could say subject plus verb plus object, or just subject, verb, object. Uh, also, you can say the subject verb agreement. That's another technical way of saying that. But yes, just subject plus verb plus object. Okay, we'll just do uh, one more one more question. Then I should get going home. It's dinner time here where I am in South Korea. So do you have any last questions for me before I go? I will do a live lesson every Tuesday at the same time. So you can join me next week. Mojib says hi. Hello, Mojib. Good to see you. Uh, Abith says, I'm following me on, on the Cake app. It's very useful. Yeah, guys, if you haven't downloaded it yet, definitely download the app Cake English. It's a very good free English application. Uh, I work for them sometimes. I make videos for them and they put them on their application. It's, it's very useful. So download the Cake English app. It's, it's free, totally free. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to finish this lesson for today now. Uh, I hope this was fun and useful for you. Go back and review all those different uh, commonly mispronounced words, and I'm sure it will help you when you're speaking English next. Uh, like I said, I will do a live lesson on tu next Tuesday at the same time as this. Uh, next week, we'll do a vocabulary lesson, so that'll be very fun. We'll do different expressions for a situation. Um, and yeah, great. Uh, keep studying English. Stay safe. 
and I'll see you next week. Lullaby, the, the name is Cake English. Uh, Mojib asked a very complicated question, so just before I go, the difference between American and British accents, there are many differences. The vowels have different sounds, slightly different sounds. Uh, Americans pronounce R, English people don't pronounce R. British people pronounce the T sound a bit stronger. There are many differences. That's a whole new lesson. Um, so you can look that up. I'll do a lesson for you one day in the future. Uh, currently, I'm in South Korea. I, I live and teach at a university in South Korea. It's uh, great. I love my job. It's great. I'm in my university now. This is my office. And I'm about to go home to have dinner and see my daughter. I have a, I have a daughter. She is um, 12 weeks old, so she's a tiny baby. <laughs> she's very, very pretty. Very pretty baby. I'll show you a picture before I go, because I'm a very proud father. That's my little daughter. <laughs> okay, guys. I hope you all had a great day. I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. And I will check and get back to you in, in uh, as soon as possible. Okay, thank you all. Have a great day.